Crafts followers. Today we're going to be making some little waterfall fringe earrings. Um, kind of a southwest style pattern. Now this is a pattern that we did get from Pierre Cast, and it was modified to be able to use our three millimeter um, little crystals here. Because I mean, just look at the shimmer on that. Um, and again, just also a little bit bigger for the purpose of this video. Um, sometimes those 11 O's are just a little too difficult to see on camera. So let's get started. Again, we are using those three millimeter crystals. So I'm using a really pretty Zychron blue, a copper, this is a half moon, that's what the um, company calls it, and then a clear AB. And just look how fun that is, oh my goodness. I wish the camera did this blue justice, you guys, because it is like a really beautiful teal color. So we are also going to be using some wildfire today. Um, I am using the 0.15 millimeter in the beige. Um, I could be using white, but kind of for the purpose of the video too, I think the beige just shows up a little bit better and it is seamless on this design. It is just beautiful. Okay, so a few other things that we do have is this beautiful desert landscape um, link. So it has that open spot here for us to go ahead and create and bead off of, and then we can connect on the top part. And then we are gonna be using our clip-on earrings. So we do sell this in a bag of, I believe, um, six really cute. Again, it has that nice rubber so it doesn't hurt our ears when it snaps close. And look at the detail on that, so gorgeous. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with getting our string. I'm gonna set that aside. And I am gonna get about five feet of cording. So my mat here is about 12 inches, so I'm just gonna measure, use it to help me measure. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm just gonna come in with my scissors and cut my string. Now, this wildfire is a thermally bonded um, bead weaving thread. So it's not gonna fray on you. Um, it's gonna hold nice and strong. And then I'm using one of our big eye needles. So if you followed along on our beading, um, our video about beading needles, a big eye needle have a hole in the middle with both the top and the bottom, um, very thin pieces held together, welded together. And I can just easily slip my thread through so I don't have to struggle getting that thread through the eye of the needle. It's gonna be nice and big and open for me. Now let's go ahead and get to the end of our cording here. And I'm just gonna slip it right through and I'm gonna tie a surgeon knot here. If you have another knot you prefer, go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna do what I am comfortable with and like. And I'm gonna do that twice. Okay. What I want to do is I want to figure out if I want both my mountains to be on the outside when I'm finished or both my mountains to be on the inside of my earring design. I really want to have it look like this. So one thing to note is I'm going to beat across here and my first row is going to be over here. And to start this piece, we're going to come in. So I have my um, first color is gonna be that cream. That's more of my choice. It's gonna come down to, everybody's gonna have different colors. So we're gonna start with that cream. You wanna put two beads on. 
and you just want to slide that all the way to the end. And then what we want to do is we want to take that needle and come up through the link. And we're just going to pull the string all the way through. And here, let's get this bead untied. You want to make sure the beads are both staying on the bottom side of the link. And we want to take our needle through that last bead and go in towards the other one. So we're going towards the outside and we're just going to pull that string right through. Again, we looped it through the back side of the link and then we came towards the beads only through one though and we're going to pull that nice and tight and what it's going to do i don't know if you guys can see let's get it nice and tight so what it ends up doing is instead of having our beads laying this way with the holes go running along with the metal, that brick stitch is gonna make it so your hole is facing out or facing down. So it's gonna create those nice um, base to start our fringe. We're gonna go ahead and keep continuing all the way across until I have six beads. And all we have to do is pick up one from here on out. I usually pick up one and I just hold the bead and pull the string through the back side and that link and just go, go, go. Keep on pulling until it's all the way through. And then again, you just put that needle right through the bead going towards the other two we already have. And then you're gonna pull nice and tight. Oops. There we go. And again, I did do that in one move just so I wasn't doing as much of pushing the bead all the way to the bottom and pulling that strand right through that link. Just kind of makes the process go, oops, a tad quicker. So again, just pulling that right through I'm holding that bead on the other side of the link because you can't create it if it comes on the inside. So make sure you're holding that bead on the outside of the link. Take your needle and go through the bead and towards the others and pull through. Again, pull nice and tight. And then we'll grab two more beads. So I get that bead off the needle, hold it on the other side of that link and just pull my string all the way through. Until it's all the way to the bottom of that link. And then go through and towards the other beads because we want to make this laying flat so that we can go ahead and make those beautiful fringe pieces and pull it nice and snug. All right, and we need one more. So we're gonna get, grab one more of that cream color and we're gonna pull that string all the way through. And then we're gonna put that needle through the bead going towards all the other ones and just pull all the way through. And it's nice and tight and snug. So now I do have this extra string. I could have done it earlier, but I am going to come in with my wildfire cord cutter and I'm just going to press my little button here. It's going to heat up that tip and it's just going to cut off my cord and it's going to sear it and it's going to be 
Um, so I won't have to worry about that from here on out. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and start with row one over here. And as you can see, you're gonna want to count this first one as a color or as a bead for your color. So we have a total of five. So we're just gonna have to grab four more cream colored So I have four more. I have four more cream for a total of five. And we'll just pull that right down the um, stream. And then we have a clear separating. And then we're gonna come in with nine of this copper color here. And then I always like to double check and make sure I got it the right amount. So two, four, six, eight, and I need one more. So we finished the copper color. We're gonna have that cream or that crystal color just separating. So I'm gonna pick up one of those and then we're gonna come in with that blue and we're gonna grab nine of these blue as well. And you guys, I don't know if you noticed, but with this mat, it does really help me in trying to move my beads and I can kind of push down and kind of wiggle my um, needle right through the bead. So I really do suggest um, having some type of mat that you're working with. Just kind of depends on your preference. So I'm gonna count my beads here. Two, four, six, eight, and nine. And then we're gonna come in with a crystal color. And then we're gonna finish with two copper. And then all of our endings are gonna go ahead and have that crystal color at it. We're just going to push all of them to the very, very end. Now, we want to go ahead and bring this needle all the way up through all of our beads, except for this last one. We're going to go ahead and skip that. So, you just want to wiggle your needle on up. If you have to kind of separate them, that is fine too. Um, you'll probably get to a point on your needle where it's um, there's not enough room. So I do always tend to have a little bit of extra room so I can push my beads down. And just keep on pushing your needle and working its way all the way up through the top. All the way. And you're even going to want to go through the bead that is attached to the link. So push your needle all the way through. And then what I like to do is make sure all my stringing is completely straight. I push my beads back to where they're supposed to be. And then I just pull the string all the way through. and that will make everything nice and tight. And then we're gonna go straight back through the top of this next bead and pull that all the way through. And then we'll do our next row. So we're going to come in and only pick up three of this cream color this time. So 
So we have three. We're going to push that on there. And then we're going to come in with a crystal. We're going to come in with one teal or blue. We'll come in with another crystal color. And then we're going to come in with seven of this copper. And we'll go ahead and count those because we want to make sure we have the right amount. So two, four, six, and one more. And then we're going to come in with a crystal. And we're going to come in with a cream color and another crystal. And then we're going to come in with seven of the teal. And you guys, again, this pattern was a little bit modified to be able to work with the size beads we are using. Um, the original pattern, it did use 11 O's and it did have um, nine fringes going across. So just keep that in mind. And we did, um, just for our design, um, we do have things not... We do have a couple sides that are up a little bit more, but that is okay. It just really comes down to your preference and what you like. Okay, so a crystal or crystal. And then we're gonna come in with three copper. And then we're gonna finish off with our crystal bead. And again, what are we going to do? We're going to wiggle that needle all the way up through the beads. Again, I leave that room because I can't get my needle all the way through to kind of push my beads down and just keep on going up the line. That's another thing, you guys, working with a mat versus like doing this in my hand. It makes... Um, Pushing my needle up through these beads so much easier. And again, we want to bring that needle th all the way through the top. I get all my strings straight, push my beads all the way up, and then just pull that extra string through. And then we're going to come back down through. with that needle. So down, pull the string all the way through, and then we're gonna start our next row. So this time we're only gonna pick up two white, and then we're gonna go to a clear, and then we're going to pick up three blue or teal. And then one crystal. The clearer the bead, the harder I always have finding a hole. Um, having a headlamp that has a magnified glass is so helpful, you guys. So I really suggest if you also have a hard time, um, definitely invest in a head a light head piece that has a magnify glass it is a game changer so i'm going to come in with five of these now of the copper color and again two four five i try to double check my beads because nothing worse than following a pattern and having put the wrong amount of beads on so now we're going to go in with three of that cream color. Three, so we got three cream color. We'll grab a crystal color. And 
And then we're gonna come in with five of the teal. So let's count those. Two, four, five. We'll come in with a crystal and then we'll come in with four of the copper. Two, three, and four. And we'll come in with our final end piece being that crystal color. And we're gonna push our beads all the way to the end. And now we're gonna go ahead and skip that last bead and wiggle our needle right up and back through the beads. Then push those down so I can make it through the rest. And then I don't know about you guys, but I always struggle in just getting the top one by itself. So I do tend to push all my beads down to be able to get through the top, um, to be able to get through that top bead. But that is just a preference. So needle through the bead and then I make sure I push them all up to the top and then pull our string through. Now we're gonna come back through the top of our next bead that is brick stitched to our link. Okay, so there we go. Pull that all the way through. And then again, start with our pattern. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and come in with five of that teal or blue color. And I'm gonna go ahead and once I get these all on there, count and double check that I have all my colors, two, four, and five. And then again, one of the clear. And then we're gonna come in with three copper, one clear, and we're gonna push those down. And we're gonna come in with five of this cream color. Okay, and count how many, two, four, and five. And we'll go ahead and put a clear one on. And then we're gonna come in with three blue, or again, that teal color. We're gonna come in with one of this crystal. And then we're gonna come in with four of these copper. And then we're finishing off all of our ends with that clear color. And again, pushing all the beads down. And then we're gonna skip that bottom one. And we are just gonna shimmy our needle all the way up through the top. Now, I don't know if you guys could kind of tell when I've been doing this. I've been trying to hold the string or the cording with my back hand and then I've been holding that link nice and tight. It just kind of gives a um, string or cording a little bit of tension so that my beads aren't wiggling all around on me and I can kind of nicely guide that needle all the way through. I mean every now and then you do get caught but for the most part it runs fairly smooth. I would love to hear if you have any other trick on being able to kind of keep that string nice and tight while you wiggle your needle back up through your pattern. I'd love to know, but I think that this works easy. And it's something that any skill level can handle. Oops. Again, we wanna push those beads all the way 
and just pull our string all the way through. Only two more rows to go, you guys. And again, we just push that needle right through the next bead. This is also where I find having a needle that has a little bit of flexibility in it is really nice because you kind of do have to work around that bead and that link to be able to get through that hole. So just a little side note to help you all. So we're gonna go ahead and grab one and we're gonna go ahead and grab a shimmery bead or we're gonna go ahead and grab that clear bead. And we're gonna come in with seven blue or teal. And we'll go ahead and count those because we wanna make sure we got the right amount. So two, four, six, and seven. And we're gonna push those all the way to the end. We're gonna go ahead and grab a clear one. We're gonna do one copper. We're gonna do a clear bead. We're gonna go ahead and get seven of these cream colors. And then we're gonna go ahead and count to make sure. So two, four, six, and seven. I'm gonna push those right down. Gonna grab a clear, again, our clear color in our pattern today. It's just separating each of those colors out and it's gonna help kinda fill that gap that we need to create a pattern that comes down in a triangle. So we have a clear, we're gonna come in with one blue. Come back in with a clear. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab three of these coppers and end our piece with a clear bead. And then we're gonna skip that last one. And we are going to get our needle up and through all of these beads. Okay, we're almost so we're gonna go ahead and pick up two of our cream colors here. And then we're gonna come in with a clear. We're gonna come in with three of that blue. And then we're gonna come in with one of our clear. And then we're gonna grab five of this copper here. You guys, and you really don't have to be just doing these colors. Um, I just really suggest, you know, having one color be A, one color be B, and one color be C. And I kind of still, <clears throat> And I would lay it out as A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, um, just so that you're not mixing up your colors and which ones go where. So let's count those. So two, four, and five. And then we need a clear. And then we need five of this cream color. So, so I believe that's five. So one, two, three, four, and five. 
gonna push those down. We're gonna go ahead and get a clear color here. And again, I believe this does have an AB finish, as I stated earlier. Okay, so we finally got a clear one. And then we're gonna go ahead and come in with five blue. Three. Okay, and let's count that. So two, four, and five. Just double checking. I'm gonna come in with a clear. Then I'm coming in with four. Coming in with four of these copper. And we're gonna finish off with a clear. And push our beads all the way to the end. And then we're gonna wiggle that needle all the way up through our beads, except for skipping that last one again. Again, just wiggling. Let's see if we can get these last few here. Kind of keep that string straight. And I tried like holding it with the bottom of my, my fingers or holding the string against the mat and I kind of pull the link and it tends to keep that string just a little bit more um, with more tension so I can wiggle my needle up cleaner and faster and smoother. Um, otherwise you're gonna kind of struggle like I was just before that. So I got my needle through that bead. Gonna make sure I straighten it. Push all my beads up and pull tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and start on our fifth row here. Okay, so needle goes down through the bead, pull all the string through and you start your next, oh shit. And push the beads down. Just get these last few here. Another thing that will help is keeping that bead as even as you can with the hole. And then all the way through the top here. And again, I kind of try to make sure my strings are nice and straight. Push my beads all the way up. And then I'm going to pull that all the way through. Making sure it's nice and snug. And then we're going to come down this next bead. Our final strand, you guys. Okay, I'm so excited. So we are gonna go ahead and do one clear, and then we're gonna come in with nine teal colored beads here. Two.
So let's go ahead and make sure we have those nine. So two, four, six, eight, nine. Now, if you're only picking up a few or one, I really don't normally count my beads, but anything four or more, I always like to count because I don't want to get all the way done with this pattern and realize I messed up. That would be so heartbreaking. So we're going to go ahead, we'll just put that clear one on, and we are going to grab nine of these clear color or these cream colored beads. Okay, so let's go ahead and count how many beads we have. So two, four, six, eight, and nine. And we're gonna go ahead and come in with that clear bead. And then I'm gonna come in with two of these copper and one clear. Then we're gonna skip that bottom one and we're gonna go all the way up these beads again. For the very last time. So push our first part of those down. And wiggle that needle on up. Okay. So we want to make sure we're still going all the way to the top on this. And through that top bead. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to push those beads all the way to the top and again just pull nice and tight. So what I like to do to tie this off is I like to go ahead and just make that knot right around the middle like we did at the very beginning. So I do it twice. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and take that needle right back through some of our beads. I usually only do a few, but you can go as far down as you would like. And I pull the cord all the way through. And then I come again with that wildfire cord cutter. Just lightly press it, get it nice and warm. And then I go right through and it cuts it perfectly for me. So I don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so now all I gotta do is get my jump rings out. So all I need is one jump ring. You always wanna have two chain nose pliers, chain nose or bent nose plier. And we're gonna go ahead and just attach this right on. We'll make sure we attach everything the right way. So let's attach it to the lean first. Attach our earpiece. Go ahead and close it on up. And look at that, we are done. It is so easy to make fringe earrings, you guys. I mean, all you have, very little knots you have to make, very, very little going back and forth. You just are gonna create that one brick stitch. Everything else is gonna go straight down and then strung right back through. Again, look how fun. I love these. I cannot wait to be wearing these um, out and about. Again, these were created with three millimeter crystal strands. The original design did have 11 O seed beads, so that created nine strands across versus the six we have here. 
Um, it's just much easier for these videos to be using a larger bead. So I did modify the design um, a little bit just to be able to flow with what we are doing today. But thank you so much for following along and happy crafting. Thank you.